everyone. Today I'm with Darren Wilson, professional boxing trainer, nutritionist, personal trainer, and a lot more who has trained a who's who of not only professional fighters in both um, boxing and MMA, but also professional rugby players, footballers, and a lot more at a very high level. And we're going to be having a chat about his life and career. So uh, Darren, thank you for talking with me today, mate. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for me. I'm me on Liam, and I um, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, no worries. So, I mean, obviously, um, starting at the beginning, um, I mean, a lot of people watching this will, will know a bit about you. But for the ones who don't, um, I'm going to start start with the basics. Now, obviously, you've trained a lot of people. I mean, obviously, you've trained Nathan Cleverly, um, you know, two-time world champion, training uh, Brett Johns in the UFC, you've got British Lions, you've got... I mean, you've got so many people that, that, that you've helped over the years. Can, can we start there and talk about like a few of the people that you've, um, that you've trained? Um, as a boxing point of view, people that know me is through Beverly because he's world level. Um, but the first person I trained was Fred James, who came into the gym, um, asked me to train him. Uh, Jason Cock again was my highest profile at the beginning. Uh, he was obviously European IBO world champion prior to that. And then Jamie Arthur, uh, Commonwealth champion, Commonwealth gold medalist. So was, um, I was lucky I started off high straight away, um, out of nothing. Um, finished boxing, got straight into coaching, coaching the amateurs, and then bang, it, it just just rolled lovely. Um, from our then was obviously the build up of everything, but. Um, and uh, that's the boxing. Obviously, loads of other boxers, as we'll probably talk throughout. Um, and then UFC, obviously, Brett Johns. He's at high level. So, so people know me through that. Uh, Cardiff City, is, who's in the championship. Uh, seems to train them as boxing, as a different output to the football. So it's a nice, different four walls to what they used to. Come into the gym, do the boxing with myself. Um, then rugby union players, rugby league players, um, uh, poof, uh, bit of, bit of everything, yeah. <laughs> yeah, too many to remember, isn't it? In a way, too many to, uh, yeah, that's brilliant. And I, obviously, I know you also do, um, you obviously do the personal training, you do uh, some, some work with nutrition, with you know, weight loss, with, with different things. Um, do you sort of combine that with the boxing, or is that more sort of like a separate, sort of a separate thing? Okay. Yeah, it's a separate thing. We obviously I'll help the boxers um, when I can. Um, but yeah, it's a separate thing. Like uh, I've always personal trained. I personal trained before. I was a, uh, that that went together. Like professional and amateur coaching. So I all rolled together. But personal training online is new. Last oof, only been a couple of months to be honest. But it's so just going good. I really enjoy it, especially lockdowns. I can't do that one. And people who know me know I love graft. I love doing something. So at the back garden doing that, and then I'm in the house doing the online stuff with the family. So it's it's, it's worked out good. Um, but really enjoying that at the moment. It was uh, oh, good, but, good. Yeah, adapting to the times. Then I mean that's yeah. You've got to like well, like you always say, you've got to um, turn a negative into a positive and and sort of adapt to it. Yeah. And then the other thing is obviously um, I want to touch on this first before we get into some other things is obviously i know you had your own um amateur career very successful amateur amateur boxing career um and then obviously you know there was a, there was a medical situation um and i'd like to touch on that as long like i say as long as it's okay because it's, it's sort of um an important part of your story i mean yeah. tell us a little bit about like uh, your amateur career and and sort of what happened there yeah i first walked in the gym at nine uh first fight at ten I had a load, load of fights then. Uh, I think it was 15. I went a bit pear shaped then. I went, um, I, I was actually fighting for Wales at the time. Um, I was okay. I wasn't the best. I was no um, superstar, but I was all right. I done pretty well for myself. Um, I went a bit off the rails then, got checked out of school. Um, just wrong road, basically. Um, started back boxing at 19. Uh, I had a good couple of years, and then I was having um, I had a brain scan. Then it was um, 
I was going to turn professional actually with my good friend uh, Craig Morgan who's I think he's going for the British title or um, being a knuckle championship now <laughs> uh, but anyway I, my brain scan was a bit uh, like a shadow on the brain who's on the brain um, so immediately I'm, I'm a guy health health first I probably could have went for another one and passed it I don't know um, but anyway so I, I took the the option and to call it a day on that no more sparring nothing um, and no kids at the time I just basically focused on Oh, sorry, uh, my amateur coach at the time, who, rest in peace, Tony's passed away now. Um, he asked me to give him help with the kids who had never trained before, never trained anyone before. Uh, I loved it straight away. Um, I was taking Rocky on a pad and Craig Morgan. Loved that. And I, I actually built a personal training business out of it. Started my own game a couple of years later. M- made the amateur boxing and personal training into one. Um, and that's... The amateurs were successful. I had loads of Welsh champions. Um, I weren't actually Lindsay's coach, but she was world number one, Lindsay Oldway. Uh, Daniel Chapman qualified for the world championships. Uh, a couple of Welsh champions. It was, it was only a couple of years we'd go in. Um, and then enrolled the pros then. Bump, 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 bump. Or next minute, I mean, uh, I'm on the world stage and bloody Mayweather versus McGregor fight. Uh, we cleverly boxed Battle Jack. Up in Vegas, <laughs> bit of a roller coaster, really, and uh, enjoyable. Brilliant, brilliant. It's been an amazing journey so far, and I obviously I know there's there's a lot more to come. But you touched on something there, Darren. Funny enough, I was going to talk about later on, but we're talking about it now. It's obviously um, boxing has taken you some amazing places. I mean, obviously I know you've been in all different parts of the world um, through you know through fighters that you've worked with and, and everything like that. I mean, what, what's the, like the best place, or I mean, is there a place that sticks out in your mind as like being one of the most amazing places you've been through boxing? Um, Vegas, probably because of the, the old, um, well, everything. The, the biggest event in a long, well, if, if ever, uh, McGregor versus me, where would be part of that? The Irish were everywhere. It was mental. It was, it was a an unreal uh, event with the. Players, uh, players, the boxers' entrances, um, the way in are just amazing, amazing place. It's just the um, everyone's a fight in Vegas. We are he, to be a head coach out there, training for someone defending his world title was uh, was great. But there's loads of other good trips, but that was the one sticking on my mind straight away. <laughs> Fantastic, and you know, Dan, I mean, this is something that. Um, you know, even though we'll talk more now in a minute about some of the other, other people you've trained, um, obviously, you know, you're very, very positive and obviously you're big on like the mental side of, uh, you know, of competing, obviously not just in fights, but obviously in, in other sports as well. And even if it's just, you know, losing weight, but, you know, personal training and everything, I've seen that you always bring um, that side into it, you know, very, very well with this sort of inspirational aspect i mean i mean what I, I don't really know how to ask this exactly but i mean what are some of your like beliefs on um on the mental side of of competition uh in in any form i just think um everyone has bad days everyone in life so just uh i just see it as fall off your horse just get back on and go again um sometimes uh, a couple of boxers over the years or people I've trained as as I could tell straight away as soon as their vibe is not good in the training, I could just feel the voice. They just don't want to be there because something's happening back home or whatever. So the best thing they can do is go back, solve that, come back and happy place into the gym. I like the love positivity, um, but you've got to help people who's the in, in a negative way at the time and do what's best for them in in life or or, or boxing, especially with the the weight cut and that's us we're like psychologists as coaches as most most coaches will tell you um it's be on the phone pretty much 24 7 a lot of it is um guiding them sometimes it's a lonely lonely sport boxing and, and cage fighting so you've got to be positive around them you can't give them no negatives as less as possible basically that's the way i look at it <laughs> Yeah, that's a good insight. That is, and and the reason for asking that, Darren, is, is obviously because I know people talk a lot about the you know the physical side of the sport, and it's obviously it's very very important with with the nutrition and, and all that type of thing. But 
I sometimes feel that for some people, the, the mental side can be um, neglected a little bit. So that's the reason for touching on. And I've seen you be very, very effective, you know, in, in that area, to be honest. Which does lead me to another thing. I mean, obviously, your, your nutrition work that you do. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, uh, I mean, in all fairness, I don't, I don't actually know lots and lots about that. So what's the, um, to be honest, so I, I would turn that one over to you. What's the um, score there? Like, what type of work do you do with that? Yeah, um, well, nutrition, is, uh, the old packaging is all like, so I do the, the training, the, um, the diet or the advice um, mindset with it. Um, the old package really so but if someone's in the wrong frame of mind and want me just to train them or I know the right fit for them or they're not the right fit for me it, 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 we're pissing against the wind really so if I'm not the man to help them I, I can't take money off them and and help them really so it's um, that, that, that's a big thing and with mindset some people want to do it but they don't really deep down want to do it it's like being pushed to do it or whatever, whatever it is, um, and they, they, they're not in the right frame of mind. I, I, I can't help them. I can't just grab their money. I can't be phoning them up day in, day out, uh, or hour after hour, just to, um, because I got so much on. I, I, I just, I, I, I basically want to take the, the money off them if I can't help them. Is the the point there. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Um, I understand. It, it makes sense. But which, you know, I mean, because there you've answered the question without me asking it really, because um, that because I've seen that you sort of go above and beyond for, you know, the people that you work with. Uh, and, I, and I'm not just saying that, like I really have seen that, but obviously it explains how it's, how it's a sort of a two way street, so to speak, you know, and, and they've got to, they've got to obviously put the work in, which does lead me to, I mean, obviously, you know, with the different people you, you've trained and, and there's obviously there's quite a mix, you know, but yeah. What sort of attributes do you look for um, in someone that you train? I mean, like uh, when they walk in, can you can you just spot that like you know that person's going to do well, or does it sort I, of take time? I look them up, but if I, I don't know them, I, I look them up. If they're not if they're not same again, not frame mind. I I want to train them. Um, I've turned some high profile people down before because I I, I just couldn't see it happening. Maybe because of traveling or this or that. It's the same again, you're pissing against the wind. So uh, mindset is going to be the one. If they're willing to put 100%, I, I don't give a fuck. If they lose lose a lot, lose more, they win. As long as they put 100% in and I'm getting, they, they, they're putting the effort in for, for, for us, really. Because uh, I, I put so much effort in. I'd be here on 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock, whatever it is, I'll be here. If they if they, they can't do it, I can't um, I can't train them. If they can't adapt or uh, for us to work, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I understand. It's it's a good insight. I mean, it's um it's it's interesting stuff. And I mean, with that um, what was I, what was I going to say there? So, out of all the people you've you've trained um, or out of the people you're training now, who who do you think will be like the next um? champion or because I mean I know obviously you've got Jamie Evans you know and, and before the lockdown you were looking at um, him going going for a title I know that uh, yeah. as just one off and obviously um, obviously Brett Johns recently had a good you know had a good win uh, in, in the UFC um, I mean that was that was not long before lockdown as well so I mean with some of these guys now what what are some of your plans like with them from here if, if that makes sense like some of the future yeah it's only uh, Jermaine Asari and yeah, Evans, I train as a pro at the moment, um, and obviously Brett Johns of the UFC. Um, he's probably a load of fights off before it in the top ten. I think he was top fourteen, I think, and then he, had, he lost two in a row, which is his first two losses. Now he's back on track now, so he he he'll, he'll, he'll get to the top quick if he keeps that um, momentum going. Uh, JJ Evans is nine fights, nine wins at the moment. He's with Mo Prior manager, so. He's changed management, so he's hopefully be out quite regular now after this lockdown. Um, we said any 50-50 fight will take it, anyone um, at welterweight, because I think it might be some behind uh, doors, behind doors fights, um, closed doors, I would call it. <laughs> um, so because it's TV only, no no ticket sales is going to be 50-50 fights. So we said, yeah, no problem, anyone. If there's a fight there. You, you would die to take anyone. Um, 
so he's probably closer to some type of title. And then Jermaine Eddy, just he's with Sanaga, so he just, just wait and see what happens. You see him box for, I think he went to box actually the week of lockdown that week uh, against um, a journeyman, uh, but that didn't come off. I was because of lockdown. That would be nice because he unboxed I think, nearly two years now, and he's thirty. Uh, you're not going to say his age, you know? Like, yeah, he looks about twenty-three. <laughs> Does, yeah, yeah, you're going to have a few years off him, I know. But no, I know I know what you mean there, yeah. So it'd be good to get him back active again, yeah. I was I was thinking that as well. Um, but yeah. I remember his last fight was he knocked out a journeyman, didn't he? On, um, I think it was on MTK show, I, I remember I was there. And then since, yeah. then, since then, there's been a couple where he's been on the bill, and that, you know, so so fingers crossed, you, you know, he'll be back. And then, no, I mean, obviously, you know, the training isn't the only um, the only thing, because I know, obviously, you know, You've done some other very cool stuff, uh, as, as as I know very well. I mean, you've had to go at DJ in, um, which was, uh, you know, I mean that that was that was a, that was a good night. That was, and you've obviously put the celebrity yeah. darts together, um, celebrity darts event with with the footballers versus the um, boxers, and uh, obviously the Beach Warriors, the obstacle course, Beach Obstacle Course. But I mean, obviously you've you know you're very open to um, sort of new challenges and new opportunities and, and everything like that. I mean, um, let, let's talk a little bit more about that. I mean, let's talk about the DJing first, because I mean, because that that was good. I mean, what sort of inspired you to get in there and just give that a go? I mean, you've never done it before, but you just no. do it. Um, I mean, what? I, I just love being busy. Um, over the years, you fucking you you see me on a roundabout selling furniture. Um, I, I just making my own furniture, selling it like I don't know, I was nineteen, something like that. Um, I've done loads of crazy stuff over the years. Uh, but yeah, DJing, I was a DJ Chucky when I had a Chucky mask on <laughs> the uni. I was, uh, I was good. I just love different stuff. Um, Beach Warriors, and it was uh, just same again. Just wanted to give it a bash. Um, that was good fun. Uh, no, it weren't actually. It was, it was probably the biggest mistake I had, but it went in for me. Um, that was mental because I just had the baby and I was so manic on the phone. It Fear on my wife, to be honest. I was constantly on the phone trying to sell this, sell that, so I get my money back, basically, which I didn't. In the end, I was a big uh, failure, but like I said, it's not a failure because I learned from it. Um, what, what was the other one? I'll dart. That was a cracking night. I raised um, about six grand for a, a mental health chat at the end, so I was, I was good. Um, I lost out in pocket. <laughs> it's a hell of a day, but um, Earned like six, I think it was near six grand for the, for the mind, mind, um, not mind, sorry, it was uh, to wish upon a star, which is mm. men, um, grievement, uh, men's grievement to um, or parents who's lost kids at a young age for their support. So I was quite happy with that. Um, kind of sitting in the box, bought it there, so it was, it was a nice, good event. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a good night. It was, it was, I, I did enjoy, I enjoyed that a lot. It was a very good atmosphere, and obviously. You know, it's for a good cause, and uh, yeah, that's that's something that is important. So yeah, I mean, I wanted to touch on that because obviously, you know, you are um, always willing to try new things, and and that's um, you know, and that, and that's sort of something special that is. So talking about going back now a little bit to the, you know, to some of the, the some of the fighting training and things like that. I mean, how do you adapt to um, different things? So what I mean by that is obviously obviously training Brett Johns in the MMA. Uh, and obviously, he got the Cage Warriors um, world title and the uh, Titan FC, and training him to a high level. But then you train the boxers, rugby players. I mean, obviously, they are different sort of sports. So, I mean, how do you? Because a lot of guys, a lot of trainers, obviously stick to sort of stick to one thing in a way. Whereas obviously, you've got like this whole approach with like the nutrition, the personal training, and then it's what you might call holistic, like like a bit of you know a bit of everything. But in terms of the in terms of the you know the different sports, I mean, how do you like adapt from from training in one to another? If that makes sense. Um, yeah, as you say, it's a pad pad work point of view. Um, obviously, the range is different with Brett Johns. He's kicking and blocking and trying to take me down. And I, I, he's, he's got me kicking and all that kit. So it's uh, distance is the, is the the one with him. Uh, boxers is depending on the fight what we work on. Uh, footballers uh, is mainly fitness. To be honest, with fitness pad work. Uh, um, and they enjoy they enjoy learning the new sport, keeps their mind fresh, and um, it's a different fitness avenue for them. So it's, a lot of them have benefited loads of that. 
Um, same with the rugby boys. Um, yeah, so it's it just that really, just yeah. really threat, uh, fit the box. Uh, sorry, with the footballers and the other sports. Um, and the boxers then just what whatever, just better than them as a fighter. And then if they got a, we know he's fighting, we'll uh, work on certain tactics. And, and you mentioned earlier, I mean, um, something we, we, you know, we mentioned earlier about the, the psychological aspect of it. But I mean, when, when people compete at, at a high level, like what you work with, how do you encourage them to bounce back from um, failure? Because what I mean by that is obviously it's an important part that obviously, you know, they've got to be ready to compete. They've got to be ready to do well. And a lot of times they do. But like, for example, Brett Johns, I mean, obviously he had the two back to back losses and then, you, you know, you're going back on track and he's winning again. I mean, how do you sort of guide someone um, through that that sort of process? You know what I mean? Because like nerves and like the you know uh, any aspect of it really, like like bouncing back. How do you how do you do that? Yeah, um, say Brett Johnson is not his main coach. I mean, it's just his boxing coach. So yeah. uh, right, I speak to him a lot. So he's uh, I keep things positive. So uh, he was devastated. He was because he's he never lost in any anything. I don't think he's ever lost in judo since. Ever, um, amateur, he never lost. Pro, he never lost in the UFC. And all of a sudden, bang! In that change room, it was uh, horrible to be. To be honest, we he, he had to be supportive of him. His missus was there, and his, all his team. Um, cleverly, I was around him with the Cobble fights. So he never lost. He, he was he fucking flew through the ranks. Um, British, Commonwealth, European. World um, interim, world eliminator, and then the world title. Bump, bump, bump. Went to LA. Went round, round everywhere. All of a sudden, he's against the Russian. Bang! He loses. That was an audible in that change room. But same again, supportive. Um, I was his strength conditioning coach at the time, so that, that, that was um, it's heartbreaking for us. It's horrible. I'm with him step of the way. Um, with them step of the way, sorry. Um, it, the phone calls, texts, everything, we're, we're there with them. Um, so we lose the team, really. And then, obviously, he went up to Cruiserweight, lost to Bellu. Um, so, as I come back to the point of coming back from loss, um, wiped the seat, seat clean, went back to light heavyweight. Come through the ranks, won another world title. So uh, that was say like from the Kovalev to the world title again. That, that was a building, building block because he was he was down low after a Kovalev fight. Um, it was all about retirement. Uh, come back, obviously lost to Bellu. It was a bit of a roller coaster. Won two fights, two knockouts. Lost to Bellu. Um, back up again. Go, going back about roller coaster and bang on our world title. Achieved his dream. That's his two-time world champion. So that, that was amazing. I was to pick him up from that, um, or to be part of it. Because obviously he's the main main thing to be supportive of him throughout. Um, I just should give any of our losses. Our cookie, cookie, Jamie Arthur. They've um, they've already already experienced losses before that. To be honest, so they they lost the. Um, or did he lose uh, the IBO cut he did? Uh, he retired, come back, um, and then went to the prize fight there, lost the prize fight there. Lucky enough, he built himself back up again, went to British title. It, it, the bottom line is, is being positive around him and being supportive with them and understanding everything with them as a team rather than just, I'm, just, I'm not just a coach, I'm a, I'm a friend and a Psychologist, fucking Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I mean, that's a good insight into it. Because, I mean, the other thing, Dan, I was thinking while you were saying that is, I mean, let's let's flip that on its head, because then when they do achieve, you know, what you, you as a team have been working towards, and they do win a title, or they do win a big fight, or even with the rugby and the football, and they do have like a really good match and you know perform really well. I mean, on the flip side, how does that feel for you? Um, you know, with a success, you know, when it's all going really well yeah. and when they do, do achieve. I mean, let's talk train, a bit about that. Train for really, we train for that. So, um, it's fucking, but, 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 in, he, um, is like, out in Germany when Clare won the world title. I was, uh, 
unreal I was, to be honest. He's a two-time world champion. Um, every boy I've had when they've won, he's, he's, I'm with him all the way. I'm, I'm, I'm there, so um, it's, it's brilliant. I have uh, quite a drink after to celebrate. And then uh, just talk through it all, the blood, sweat, tears throughout the camp is is all worth it then. Even if they lose, or I, I, I don't think I've had a boxer that I'm going to give 100% uh, in that ring. So at least they've come away with their head held, held, head held high. And um, it's been, been proud of me, me being proud of them as a, as a trainer and a friend. That's amazing. I mean, it's... it's... It's amazing to to hear it, you know, like that, um, and and that sort of inside view of it. And the other thing is, um, I mean, obviously, you know, all, all these years now that you've been doing this and and helping all these people and, and everything like that. I mean, basically, what what keeps you like so motivated to keep um, performing, but at the highest level? I mean, it's, it's one thing to keep ticking over, but I mean, you know, you're, you're sort of consistently, um, you know, delivering results with the people that you train. Uh, but you have to be very dedicated yourself in order to do that. So, uh, if that makes sense. So, what what keeps that process for you like, um, going? The, the love of it, really, because yeah, what I do is what I love. Uh, I'm very lucky to get paid for what I do. Um, so it's it's obviously even my personal trainer. I love taking, I love people um, achieving their goals. Um, so for personal training, the, the, the footballers getting better, fit, uh, the boxers winning their fights or getting to where they, 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 they're going to go. Um, it's just the love of it really is the, is the answer, I think. <laughs> That's good. I mean, you, you know, you've got to love what you're doing in life. I've, like I've always said that, you know. Um, and then, um, I mean, talking about the personal training, I mean... Um, Let's talk about that because we talked very much about like the professionals and everything, which is cool. But like, when is people, you know, achieving their personal fitness goals? And whether it's losing weight, whether it's getting your fitness stronger, better cardio, this, that, and the other. I mean, um, what sort of process do you go through with them? Is, is it quite similar to 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 the fighters, or is it or is it quite different? Or let's talk a little bit about like a little bit about that. Yeah, all um, all different. Really. My online stuff is. A lot of people I've never met. I just speak to them on the phone, and they follow me through social media or whatever. I've seen the, like, like you said, the positivity um, and what results I have. So it's um, like I said, a couple of people I've never ever met. Um, but the hands-on stuff, the personal training is is um, yes, it's, it's different because they, they 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 sometimes do their own stuff, and then they come to me for their pad work. Um, we've got someone who's with me all the time three times a week doing their, their weights and their boxing and everything um, but probably 70% of the people is come to me for pad work and professionals uh, sorry the personal training so they, their pad work um, learning boxing getting fit and getting getting their weight down for the wedding or whatever it is <laughs> um, yeah so it's, it's, it's all different really it's a, like I said adapt to what whatever's there. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Which which does lead me to something else, you know, Dan, I, I wanted to ask you is, I know, obviously, I'm going to ask you about, like, what advice you give to, to people. Now, I know there's a lot of advice you give to people, and I don't need to give too much away for free on here because, obviously, you know, it's, it's what you do. But if, if there was, like, a broad sort of um, overview of one or two things, you know, to succeed, not just in fighting, but in like uh, in any professional sport, even if, like you say, even if it's just losing weight, like if someone wants to exceed, you know, if they want to hit that goal, what would you say would be like one or two key things that are just, just sort of essential for, for doing that, if, if that, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, number one, get shot of every negative person around you, if possible. I know some would be stuck around you, but go on social media, get rid of every negative person who runs, not runs you down, but you know, gets into your mind and think, oh, they'd be a negative. Just don't, don't. Ah, that's that's draining, draining. Uh, even if it's a small percentage, draining of the energy. Um, so get rid of as much negativity as possible in your life. Um, and sleep is very important. If you're not sleeping, 
tidy it's it's um i'm gonna backwards effect we used to need a uh, nail to sleep in that's might be through a few factors but sleeping is a big thing um and exercise trying even if it's walk go out and walk any any form of exercise release all those happy hormones um get get moving really okay that's good that's good advice i mean it's very good it's very good advice because you've been in and sort of done this with you know with so many people um it's it, and like i said i don't even give too much away because I, I i know personally that you've got so much more to share but it, it's nice to have a little um like a little overview there and then i mean let's talk a little bit about like um you know future plans basically i mean let's talk a little bit about uh about this and i know things are a bit on hold and and but to some extent a bit confused at the minute with the lockdown and stuff but when that's over and, and now i mean over the next so many years and things. What are your What are your goals now? What are, What do you like your future aims? Um, boxing point of view is I I'd love to be world level again, um, but I love grassroots as well. At the same time, love all the grassroots boxing, right the way through. Um, just to build someone up to right the way through. Like I've trained Jamie and Jermaine from the start, and hopefully uh, another load. Um, like Cleverly was already made, Cookie was already made, Jamie Arthur was already made. They they were already champions. I was lucky to have them, but um, they were already champions before I coached them and other people coached them. So I jumped on late, if you know what I mean. Uh, but it's nice to ideally train someone from a start to the top. Um, I love that. Uh, person training, just carry on with that. Keep that going because that keeps my mind, mind going. And I love it. Uh, online personal training, like I said, with the, this uh, lockdown, people's looking at social media, looking at YouTube more. Um, they're looking for people like me. Is People look up to me is what I've been told. Right? Um, so I just keep trying to motivate people. And if they're interested in working with me, happy days. Um, Brett, you know, hopefully, hopefully keeping him going up a ladder, keep his boxing going, and keep working with Carlos City again back to Premiership is a very small part I am doing it. Um, my personal training people hitting their goals, um, and that all boils around my my family. As uh, everything I mentioned there is around my family. That's my 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 main thing, really, my family and everything won't revolve around that. So it's, um, it's, um, they're very understanding if I got to go to the Germany or America or whatever, wherever I go, Murfa, <laughs> um, they understand and, uh, and they're very supportive of what I do. So that's a big thing. Um, that's about it, I think. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, keeping at it. And the only other thing, Darren, that I was just going to touch on is, really, you know, the, I think the last one, really. It's obviously, um, you know, you practice what you preach. I mean, that goes without saying, you know. Um, and anyone watching this who doesn't know you, I can vouch for that. You're, you know, you absolutely you practice what you preach. But in your community, I mean, I think you personally, you've had a positive impact. I, I would say you've had a positive impact, like, on your community, you know. And what I mean by that is, like, inspiring people, uh, even by... Maybe not directly. Do you know what I mean? So maybe, like, even people see from from a distance, they see what you're doing, and they're inspired by it. Now, where I'm going with this is, is I'd like to ask you, um, what sort of impact you think you've had on like your community, on like your, you know, your your local area, if that if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, see, like, go to the shop or the pub or whatever. They, everyone talks to me about boxing or. Um, now I've been more active on person training. Loads of people ask me about this, and um, so yeah, I think I got an impact on them. Uh, people look up to me is is what I what I learn. I've had some people say, um, "Thank you for your posts and what you're doing on Facebook or Instagram." I can't remember which one. Um, it, it inspire me. So it's, um, they just what I'm posting really and. Not not, uh, not a client, not a paying client, just a person who's nice in the in the pub. To be honest, it was. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, uh, brilliant. I mean, that shows that shows the reach that you're having. Um, to be honest, which is which is something I think. So I think that's very valuable in itself because it, you know even just posting something. I mean, people people need that. You know, especially at times like now. And, and to be honest, that's a big part of what I'm trying to do. Like with this, is, is show you know that positive side of things. Um, you know what I mean? And show you know. So that that's the plan. Dar, I really, I mean, I think that's everything to be honest. I mean, I think we've covered. Um, some really good stuff that even though it's not your typical, you know, fighting interview and all, I, I think we've covered like a lot of some really good stuff. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about specifically or, or are you like, are you all good? Or... Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, I'm happy to answer your questions. I have a, I don't think I've got nothing or... no, that's, that's cool. Sometimes people do, so I always ask. But no, I mean, like I said before, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you taking the time because I know you're very, very busy with all these things and obviously with your family. So, you know, I, I do appreciate you taking the time to, you know, to have a chat. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.